Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we have a different type of video. We are on the Sapiens Institute website and we're going to read Hamza Tsortzi's article called Produce One Chapter Like It, The Miraculous Inimitability of the Quran's Shortest Chapter. So this is the case for the Quran being miraculous, the Quran being the word of God, and hence it will challenge the audience to produce a chapter like the Quran, which up until now hasn't been met. In this day and age with technology, we're going to use ChatGPT as well today to produce a chapter like the Quran. Let's see if we succeed with that. But guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, Let's have a look. Produce one chapter like it. The miraculous inimitability of the Quran's shortest chapter. The Quran presents a challenge to humanity to produce one chapter like it. Its shortest chapter, al kawthar displays a remarkable frequency of linguistic devices and literally features and it expresses maximal meaning with a unique structure. Informed by both Islamic and Western scholarship, this essay aims to showcase the Quran's miraculous literary and linguistic inimitability by analyzing its smallest chapter. It also addresses key objections. So here is the challenge. Take 10 words in any language, formulate it into three lines or verses, and add any preposition or linguistic particle you see fit. Produce at least 27 rhetorical devices and literary features. At the same time, ensure it has a unique structure, it's timelessly meaningful and relates to themes within a book that it is part of. The size of the which is over 70,000 words. Make sure four of its words are unique and never used again in the book. Ensure each line or verse ends with a rhyme created by words with the most optimal meanings. Make sure that these words are used only once in the three lines and not used anywhere else in the book. Ensure that the three lines concisely and eloquently, semantically mirror the chapter before it and they must formulate a profound response to an unplanned set of circumstances. You must use 10 letters in each line and 10 letters only once in the entire three lines. Throughout the whole piece, make sure you produce a semantically oriented rhythm without sacrificing any meaning. Do all of the above publicly in one attempt without revision or amendment, in absence of any formal training in eloquence or rhetoric. Impossible as the above may seem, this is exactly what the Quran achieved in its shortest chapter, al kawthar the abundance. And it was expressed through Prophet Muhammad wasalam, who was not known to have composed any poetry nor cultivated any special rhetorical skills. Informed by both Islamic and Western scholarship, this essay aims to showcase to an English-speaking audience the Quran's miraculous literary and linguistic inimitability. This will be achieved by analyzing the smallest chapter and it will address key objections. Although this essay will also be appreciated by Arabic speakers, it will not delve into the deep linguistic debates because it will be of no significance to those unfamiliar with Arabic linguistics. So it would be of course amazing to take this text and use it as a prompt for ChatGPT. However, it is basically impossible of course because for it, ChatGPT must write then a whole book that relates to that specific verse in turn. But nevertheless, just for the sake of experimentation, I will take this now as a prompt out of sheer interest myself and feed it to ChatGPT to see what will happen. All right, we are in ChatGPT. I just copy pasted it as a prompt. But as I already mentioned, here you see, for example, relates to themes within a book that it is part of is of course impossible because now ChatGPT has to make up a verse and there is no complete book that would relate to this theme. Another issue arises here in the end, of course, in absence of any formal training in eloquence and rhetoric. So now ChatGPT, of course, didn't receive any formal training in eloquence or rhetoric. 
But nevertheless, it is, of course, a very sophisticated machine that is quite eloquent and has a type of training in rhetoric, of course. Therefore, to respond to this prompt is basically impossible already. But nevertheless, for the sake of curiosity, let's go. Okay, let's see what ChatGPT came up with. It writes, This is indeed a very challenging task. Crafting such intricate, complex and nuanced work requires layers of thought, creativity and control over language while also adhering to very specific constraints. To address your challenge, here are the three verses. Through dust we wander, paths align, in hearts forgotten, truths divine. As silence fades, the stars refine. Yeah, well, ChatGPT, that sounds very, very cheesy and corny, I have to say. <laughs> now let's read the breakdown of the features. Number one, anaphora. Through, in, and S begin each line for rhythmic emphasis. Okay, that is within the English language, of course. Alliteration, dust, and divine both use a repeating D sound. Okay, assonance, the A sound in paths and a line harmonizes with the A in stars. Consonants, fades, and stars have repeating S sounds. Internal rhyme, forgotten and divine, mirror sounds with the line. Okay. Metaphor, through dust we wander, symbolizes life's journey. Yeah, I noticed, ChatGPT. I did notice. Personification, stars refine, gives celestial objects human-like qualities of improvement or perfection. Any thesis, dust, something mundane versus stars, something celestial, creates contrast. Irony, truths being forgotten while being divine contrasts with their inherent importance. And so on and so forth. Okay, now let's compare this with Suda al Kauthar. So here we see the English translation. Indeed, we have granted you, O Prophet, abundant goodness. So pray and sacrifice to your Lord alone. Only the one who hates you is truly cut off from any goodness. And now reading those three verses on a surface level without understanding that this here is all that went into those three verses, I of course see how someone can assume that it's quite easy to replicate the Quran. However, of course, they don't understand the depth of the simplicity. Let's read on. In this chapter, Hamza Tsorsis writes the challenge. Several verses in the Quran express a tahadi to its readers. The word tahadi in Arabic literally means challenge. According to many scholars, these verses refer to the linguistic and literary inimitability of the Quran, which lies at the heart of the Quran's claim to being of divine origin. The Quran states, if you are in doubt of what we have revealed to our messenger, then produce one chapter like it. Call upon all your helpers besides Allah if you are truthful. End or do they say he fabricated the message? Nay, they have no faith. Let them produce a recital like it, if they speak the truth. The unique literary and linguistic features of the Quran have been used by Muslims to articulate a number of arguments to substantiate their belief that the book is from the divine. The inimitability of the Quran developed into the Muslim theological doctrine, el ijaz el quran the word ijaz is a verbal noun that means miraculousness and comes from the verb ijaza, which means to fail, to act, to be or become incapable of, to become powerless, impotent or unable to carry out something. According to numerous classical Quranic commentators, the various verses that issue a challenge to produce a chapter like it daringly call for the linguistic experts of any era to imitate the Quran's linguistic and literary features. The tools needed to meet this challenge are the finite grammatical rules, literary and linguistic devices, and the letters that comprise the Arabic language. These are independent measures available to all. Jalal al-Din al-Suyuti, a prolific 15th century writer and scholar, 
summarizes this point. When the prophet brought the challenge to them, they were the most eloquent rhetoricians, so he challenged them to produce something like the Quran. And many years passed, and they were unable to do so, as God says, let them then produce a recitation similar to it, if indeed they are truthful. Then the prophet challenged them to produce ten chapters like it, where God says, say, bring the ten chapters like it, and call upon whomever you can besides God, if you are truthful. Then he challenged them to produce a single chapter where God says, or do they say he, i.e. the prophet, has forged it? Say, bring a forged chapter like it, and call upon whomever you can besides God, if you are truthful. When the Arabs were unable to produce a single chapter like the Quran, despite their being the most eloquent rhetoricians amongst them, the Prophet openly announced the failure and inability to meet the challenge and declared the inimitability of the Quran. Then God said, Say, if all of humankind and the jinn gathered together to produce the like of the Quran, they could not produce it even if they helped one another. Unparalleled use and frequency of linguistic and literary features. The 108th chapter, al kawthar like all the other chapters in the Quran, has an abundance of linguistic and literary features. According to many scholars and academics, the Quran has a greater use of literary and linguistic devices and features than any other text, past or present. Below are some examples of how chapter al kawthar achieves this. The list below is not exhaustive, however, it provides compelling evidence to substantiate the miraculous inimitability of this chapter. So here we can read the Arabic. Here's the transliteration. Inna etina el kawthar fesili rabbika wan har inna sheni akahu wel abtar. Indeed, we have given you the abundance, so pray to your Lord and sacrifice. Indeed, your enemy is cut off. This is a different translation here. So then it proceeds to break down everything into emphasis, choice of pronoun, word choice, past tense, plural, comprehensiveness and perpetuity, word arrangement, conceptual relatedness intertextually, choice of noun, grammatical shift, word of choice, emphasis, your hater, word choice again, etc., etc., you name it. So I'm going to link this article, as I said, in the description box below, and you can read it yourself. However, for the sake of time, we're going to get to the conclusion now. So the conclusion, this essay showcased the miraculous inimitability of the Quranic discourse by analyzing its shortest chapter, El Kawthar. The literary and linguistic analysis provides compelling evidence that it was not humanly possible to produce the three lines of Arabic, given the fact that the Prophet wasalam, was not known to have cultivated any rhetorical gifts and he was not recognized as a poetic master. How can al kawthar be reasonably explained? It is important to remind the read that al kawthar has only 10 lexical items with at least 27 linguistic and literary devices. It has semantically oriented rhythm and rhyme whilst maintaining optimal meaning. The chapter was revealed as a response to specific circumstances, however it is universal in its advice and meaning. It also relates to concepts and key themes of a book that it is part of and it uses four words that are not used in the book, which has over 70,000 words. This chapter uses 10 lexical items, and the whole chapter uses 10 letters only once, and it semantically mirrors the chapter before it in an eloquent way, without any superfluous use of language. Considering the Prophet wasalam, revealed this verse publicly, without revision or addition, compounds the conclusion that it could not have been humanly possible to produce such literary expression. All of this is in the context of the Quran presenting a challenge to humanity to produce one chapter like it. Although the 7th century Arab linguists of the time were best placed to respond to the Quranic challenge, they failed to do so and resorted to boycott, abuse, war and torture. How is this humanly possible? Not being able to adequately answer this question should make one stand in the possibility that the Quran is the word of God. 
nor could this Quran have been devised by anyone other than God. It is a confirmation of what was revealed before it and an explanation of the scripture. Let there be no doubt about it. It is from the Lord of the worlds. The remarkable features of Al-Kawthar should also encourage the reader to take the Quran's message seriously. The Quran teaches that our purpose in life is to worship God. This involves affirming God's oneness, adoring him and directing and singling out all acts of worship to him alone. The way to worship God is to follow the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and by doing so it will facilitate for us a life of contentment and eternal bliss in the hereafter. It is only through this that we can also hope to be part of the community that will gather at the river of paradise that was promised to him. El Kauthar. Oh, yes, and this is it for today's video. It's long enough as it is, so I'm going to cut it off here. As I mentioned, you're going to find the article linked in the description box below so you can read it for yourself. If you enjoyed this content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. Thank you very much for that. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. Ya nafsu illam tadfari la tajzai Oh